Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Radical Rescue. John. You guys learned all this week John. about what John. Jesus Christ did. I didn't turn it off. <laughs> I didn't touch it. It's still green. Huh. See, it's not my fault. <laughs> How about now? How about now? Here, I'll let you look at it and you can figure out what's going on. Excuse me. Testing, testing, testing. No. Do you want me to use just a handheld mic? That's okay. I can speak loud enough. I don't need a mic, but just for those who. Which hmm. one? Push the what? <laughs> How about that? Make sure the light's green. Yeah. It's green, Donald. Can you get this one? It's number three. Four. Four. Oh, there you go. <laughs> All right. Radical Rescue. Radical Rescue. Do you have a Bible? It would help you to actually read the scriptures, I want to tell you. So the first one that I want you to look at, you guys turn to John chapter 1, verse 29. We're going to find John chapter 1, verse 29. When you look at all these decorations, and it's for the sanctuary, and you start to see what each one of these articles mean, what I want you to focus on is this little lamb right here. John 1, verse 29. Do you have it? Can you read it for us? The next day John see Jesus come, coming unto him and say, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Radical rescue. That's what you guys learned about this week, right? Jesus comes to where John was baptizing, and John sees him from a distance, and John points him out and tells all the people, Behold the the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. The importance for you guys of understanding this is that without Jesus Christ, there is no way to ever get clean from the sins that you commit. You little guys over here. Hey, you guys. You guys. Do you ever get in trouble? Sometimes? Thank you for your honesty. Look around and look at all these people here. Because if they were honest with you, they would tell you they all get in trouble sometimes. But this is, what, this is what Jesus came to save us from. Jesus not only will take that trouble and make it go away, make it clean, but he will give you the power to not get in trouble at all. Is that good news? Yes. Listen. As you guys grow up, and you guys grow up, where's Gilbert at? You listen to me, little buddy? Okay? As you grow up, you are going to need to draw closer and closer to Jesus Christ. Because there are so many things in this world that's going to draw your attention away from Him. There's going to be friends. <laughs> there's going to be entertainment. There's just a thousand things that the devil has to draw your attention away. But God gave us one thing. And the reason why he gave us one thing is so that we can focus on that one thing. You can never go wrong if you keep your relationship with Jesus Christ real and alive. But that relationship is just like a friendship. What happens when your friends move out of state and you don't get to talk to them for like months? Well, let's start with weeks. And then weeks turn into months. And then months turn into a year. Well, the first few days you guys were like all close and stuff, and you guys were like talking all the time, texting all the time. And then after a few weeks, you guys kind of talk to each other maybe like once a week, and then months you kind of forget about each other, maybe like rarely. Listen, that's the same thing that will happen with you and Jesus Christ if you do not talk to Him 
on a daily basis. If you don't read his word, what's his word? Bible. Do you read the Bible? Sometimes. Okay, here, here's your next verse to look at. And it's going to be Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9. Let your friend read. <coughs> Hebrews 2, verse 9. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for suffering and death, crowned with glory and hon honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Listen, what you just read... That's what this means. That is the radical rescue that God gave us through His Son, Jesus Christ. That verse tells us that Jesus was made a little lower than the angels. He came as a man, and He died as the Lamb of God. Amen. That verse tells you what? He tasted death for who? Everyone. For everyone. Gilbert, where are you at, buddy? Raise your hand. I'll go ahead and look at Gilbert. Gilbert, Jesus Christ came to die just for you. The Bible tells us in John 3.16 that God so loved Gilbert that he gave everything and all the treasures in heaven so that you could have eternal life. And all of you that are here this morning, put your name right there, that God so loved your name, you. That God so loved you two over here that he was willing to give the best that he had. And that best was his son, Jesus Christ. That is radical rescue. Do you understand how much God loves you? You know that your mom, dad loves you. And that's how much God loves you. But he loves you even more than that. There is no stronger love. You guys. You guys at your age you're going to start to understand the different types of human love. Right? You know the love of a friend, right? You know the love of a parent, right? What you need to start to understand and really believe is the love that God has for you. Amen. And that love allowed Him to give His Son as a lamb who knew no sin so He could die for you and me who were sinners. The Bible tells us in Romans that while we were yet sinners, enemies of God, that God demonstrates His love for us by giving us His Son. Right? Yeah. Now, how many of you would be willing to die for an evil person? How many of you would be willing to die for a good person? Paul says, well, maybe for a good person, someone may be willing to die. To die, but God demonstrates His love towards us in that while we were sinners, enemies of God, He gave us His Son so that you and I could live with Him forever. Do you like to be alive today? Would you like the alternative? No, huh? Listen, do you like to go surfing? Do you like going to the beach? Do you like skateboarding? Is it fun? Do you like hanging out with your friends? Is that fun? You want to continue to be able to do that, right? Look around. Look around. Okay, because you got people here of every age. You got munchkin ones like them. You got you guys. You got old people like me. <laughs> Look around, because there's older people than me, too. <laughs> you guys are going to be my age one day. Then you're going to be Bob's age one day. You know who Bob is? Do you know who Bob is? Listen, that man just turned 80 years old. He taught me how to surf. <laughs> he taught me how to surf. That is my goal and my dream, is to be that age and still being able to be blessed by God to do those kind of things. That's part of the radical rescue that God has given us. But listen. Each one of you guys have a choice. You guys have a choice. And that choice is made every day. And that choice is to either believe that Christ is real, believe that He loves you, and allow Him to live inside of you, or you're going to go out there and you're just going to want fun, want excitement, and want to play around. 
choice is yours. Now, can I ask you a question? Will you answer it honestly? Are Christians fun or boring? There you go. There you go. Say that loud. You're pretty fun because you take me surfing and you take me and Jay to hang out. And... So listen, just because you're a Christian doesn't mean that you can't do anything. And this is what we as adults need to show them, and especially them in Gilbert. That listen, being a Christian is not a death sentence to fun. Well, they only get one amen for that? Let me say that again. Amen. Okay? Look around. Do you want kids in the church? Do you want them to stay in the church? Then they better see excitement and enjoyment on your face. That is part of the radical rescue that God gave. Okay? So I'm going to have them read one more text. Because I only got a short period of time here. I want you to read 2 Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse twenty-one. Rian, can you read that one? That's okay, because it's all starts with a C. Okay, now that's first. The second. Second Corinthians chapter. 5, verse 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might, might be made the righteousness of God in him. Okay. Now, there is so much depth in that one verse. That is the gospel. You want one verse that explains the gospel? That's the verse. Christ gives us his righteousness, and he took our unrighteousness. He gave us what we don't deserve, and he took what he did not deserve. That's the gospel. That's the love that God has for you. Let me ask you guys a question. Do you have a brother or sister? Do you get along with them? On really good days, do you love them? Would you be willing to allow them to die? for like your worst enemy. Now, that'd be hard, wouldn't it? Do you understand? This is what radical rescue is. This is what God the Father did in giving us His Son, Jesus Christ. And that is why we have a choice. And that is we either can accept Him and allow Him day by day to live in us and change us, or we can reject Him. And how you live, how you talk, how you treat others, will show whether you've accepted him or rejected him. Amen? Amen. Listen, Radical Rescue. How much, where's Tarsina? How much time do I have? Can I have five more minutes? <laughs> you should not say that. <laughs> Listen. What I want to talk about as I close here is the sanctuary. What you guys studied this whole week because in the Old Testament, David was having a really bad season in his life. And he was wondering why the wicked prosper and God's people suffer. And he cried out to God. And God answered his prayer and talked to him. And do you know what God told him? God told him to go into the sanctuary and look around and understand what all of these different items and articles mean. Because in the original language, he tells them that every wit, everything in there, every wit of it speaks of me. That me is Jesus Christ. Amen. Listen and understand. When you sin, when you do something wrong, and I'm not talking about a hundred or a thousand sins, I'm talking one. One sin is enough to separate you from God for eternity. Do you understand that? <clears throat> this is why I think about that. Do we need radical rescue? Amen. How many sins did it take Adam and Eve to commit 
for them to get kicked out of the garden in the very presence of God. Sin. Singular. One sin. Christ came to take care of that sin problem. And so what you see here is the story of redemption. God gives us his law, and that law is his character. And in that law is how we are to relate to him and how we are to relate to each other. Is that right? If we love God, we'll have no other gods before him. If we love God, we won't make any graven images and bow down to them. If we love God, we will not take his name in vain. Is that right? That's how we come to God. And we worship God on his terms, through his directions, and not our own. The last part of those Ten Commandments are how we relate to each other. Brianna, you are my friend. And not just, you know, you can have like, <laughs> how many friends do you have on your social media that follow you? Uh, nine, nine, Say it loud. 983. 983. Do you know all 983? Yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> so see, there's different levels and degrees of friends. Are you friends with her? You are my friend. We hang out. I've gotten to know you really well, and I've come to love you. That kind of friendship is the same type of friendship that Jesus wants with you. That type of friendship where we know each other, where I know that if you send her a text or anything, Electronically, and you put LOL there, do not use capital letters, or else she will not respond to you. Is that right? I never check my message. I know. Yeah, that's another thing, too. But capital LOL, that gets you agitated, doesn't it? Laugh out loud. <laughs> See? <laughs> anyway, that is the kind of friendship that Christ wants with you, with how you know her, how she knows you, the things that make you laugh things that get you angry. Jesus wants that same type of relationship. The question is, is how do you have a relationship like that with somebody you don't see? That's a question for adults. Because I expect them to be silent on that. But you guys, you guys have been walking with Christ year after year after year after year. Can you answer that question? How do you have a relationship with somebody you can't see? Faith. Faith. But listen, with faith, you can see Him, you can feel Him, and you can hear Him. Does the Holy Spirit live inside of you? Amen. Is that Spirit living inside you just as real as Brianna, Brianna and her friend sitting right there? Yes. Are you sure about that? Yes. Because that's the difference between fake Christianity and real Christianity. The Spirit living in you what God has done through this radical rescue is allow Emmanuel, God, with us. It doesn't mean that Jesus is way over there. It means Jesus is inside. <laughs> this is what he wants for all of us. And this is what this VBS program was all about. And this is what the children got to learn all week. Amen? Amen. Okay. So, can you turn, sorry, one last text. Can you turn back to Hebrews? So just turn a couple. Okay, that's Hebrews, right? Turn to Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 and 16. That was our text for this morning. Mm -hmm. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast to profession, for we have not, not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points temp tempted, like as we are yet without sin. Okay, what's that telling you about Christ? It's telling you that there is nothing that you will ever experience in this life that He didn't already go through. There is nothing you can say, God, you have no idea what it is I'm going through. Because everything that we experience, He experienced. And not only did He experience, but He experienced it with victory. Is that good news? Yeah. Are you sure that's good news? Yeah. Listen, 
That takes faith to believe and walk in that kind of victory. Can you have victory in your life? Is this radical rescue plan real? Is it powerful? And will it change us? Or is it just something we come together on one day of the week, talk about, go home, and get on with our lives? Listen, think about this. The world is waiting to see Christ living in you and the power and the hope that he brings. When they see that, and they realize, wow, you have something that I am dying for. then you won't have any empty seats here in the church. Amen? Amen. Amen? So as I close, the choice is yours. God has given us a radical rescue plan. Everything has been done. All that we are called to do is submit, believe, and surrender. Here, we're going to turn the lights off and look up here. Watch this. Did it go out? It may have. I don't Check know. again. Do you remember what shines in the middle of the mercy seat? The batteries are low and lower. Sorry. The batteries are done. That's fine. What are you going to do? At this time, we're going to pass out the um, certificates that have been made. As I call your name, come to the front and accept your certificate. Connor? Mm -hmm. Brianna? Rosa?
prayer. As I said, I'll pray for the closing prayer, also for the food. And as we go into the next room, let us allow the, the kids from BBS, their parents, and the guests go first in line for the food. Everybody got that? All right, let's bow our heads to close. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this blessed Sabbath. Lord, thank you for this VBS program. I thank you for all those who had their hands in the creation of this, that they were led by your Spirit. I thank you for the children who came, for the young people. I pray, Father, that you will continue to fill them day by day with your Holy Spirit, that what they learned about Jesus Christ this week, Father, they will take into their hearts and they will accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Father, what I pray is that they will not leave here the same as when they came, but they will leave here born again, saved by the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that you continue to show them clearer and clearer your love for them. I also pray that you will show that love to all of us who are gathered here. Father, this life can be hard. There are things that happen that we don't understand. There are struggles that we go through that are extremely painful and hard. And what I pray, Father, is that you fill us with your Holy Spirit, that we may have your peace and your comfort. But most of all,